let's get into it. The day has finally arrived. I've been planning this video for so many months. I knew when I first, when I uploaded the first video a couple months ago, I knew this is the video that I needed, that I really, really would like to do. I'm gonna make this introduction short and sweet because there's a lot to get into. So this is the best 25 albums of 2020 so far. Now, this is the list I made, okay? And um, you have the right to your opinion. This is just what I think. You may think the albums I mentioned should be much higher or much lower. That's okay. That is just how I decided to rank it, okay? So, without further ado, let's get into it. I got a notebook with me, just like last time, so I can have some kind of structure with this. Also, with this album video, it'll like really show you the music taste that I have and what I've kind of what, or what I have a liking for. And I always find it interesting to see how people rank different albums and music. So you will you will learn a lot about me in this video. So I'm excited for it. Starting at number 25 is Heartbreak Weather by Niall Horan, which was released on March 13th, 2020, the day after the entire world changed. March 12th, cause of Corona. I'm gonna try to not say that word because it's like cursed at this point. How I'm gonna structure this. So first I'm going to say album and artist. Two, what I personally liked about what I personally liked about each project, what stood out to me on the first listen. Mentioning the standout tracks, vocals, lyrics, production, something along those lines. Then talking about the album title and how it relates to the cohesiveness of the project, overall meaning, and then Finally, your favorite lyrics or and or final thoughts. So with most of these early albums, I don't have a whole lot of like favorite lyrics or lyrics that stood out to me. It's just kind of like the production or like the song as itself. So Heartbreak Weather by Niall Horan. I, what, I don't think I was going to listen to it, but I decided to give him a chance because I really liked Fine Line by Harry Styles, so I was like, maybe I should just give the album a try, see what I, see what I like about it. Definitely, with the first track, Heartbreak Weather, instantly captiv captivated me. It just, like, it just set the precedent for the entire album. Like, it's so cheerful, nice, and it's just like really good. It's like a really good pop song, for a starter for an album. I also like, some of the standout tracks I liked were, mm, not that one, I'm gonna get into her later, but San Francisco, still, Heartbreak Weather, of course, I Miss Small Talk. Now, I don't listen to that song, but when I, it's, when I heard that song for the first time, I just, I was like, dang, girl, okay, it was, what? Wait, let's get the small top and go straight to your room. Something like that. I'm like, bro, he get freaking. Kind of like, <laughs> kind of like, it reminded me, well, not really, it was just like the title of it. Katy Perry's small talk and then Niall's small talk. Katy's song, that one, uh, that one is shaking in comparison to Niall's song. So, yeah. Uh, pfft. How the heartbreak weather aspect. So with that, he went into like a lot of like different element, well, aspects of love, heartbreak, relationships, just kind of like simple stuff like that. Didn't go like really deep, really like dig deep, which is okay. I mean, not a lot of artists do that anyway. But yeah, I didn't have a whole bunch of standout lyrics from that one, but yeah. Okay, that was Heartbreak Weather by Niall Horan. At number 24 is Circles, is Circles by Mac Miller. Whew, this one came, this album came out in January of this year. 
I believe it, yeah, it came out in January, but then the deluxe came out in March, which are the only two songs, which is right and floating. Listen, I was never a Mac Miller listener. Like I wasn't a fan of him, especially until like after his tragic death in September, 2018, which is maybe two years this year, which is crazy to think about. But yeah, th this felt, this album felt finalized, but also it didn't at the same time because it was a project that he was working with before, right before he died. And it just was like, kind of a little bit of vocals, and like not a whole lot, but then the rest is just like production, just very soft, like a very easy listen, I would think, I would, I would say. But I don't mind it, it has like a very, it's like kind of like an ambiance album. I don't really know what ambiance is, to be quite honest. I just know it's like really like chilled down, smooth listening, yeah. And I really like the album, like the cover art of it, I really like it. And it's definitely an album that I would listen to like playing in the background while I'm like doing, like while I'm doing something else. Oh yeah, standout tracks, standout tracks. I really liked I Can See, Circles, Good News, Surf, Woods, and Right. Those are the songs that stood out to me the most. It, it's pretty, it's a pretty decent album. I really liked, I really liked it. So that was Circles by Mac. Miller. At number 23 is Pedals for Armor by Haley Williams. Now this album, uh, this is her first solo project apart from Paramore. I first really got into Paramore with their last album After Laughter. With Pedals for Armor, I, like with the first track, Simmer, instantly grabbed the attention I had. It, and the video is so, interesting like there's so many layers to it it's a really good opening track and it, like i think it's a really good pick for a single i'm not entirely sure what pedals for armor means in context of the album i don't really know what it means but anyway some some standout tracks some simmer roses lotus violet iris leave it alone crystal clear and dead horse Dead Horse, the lyrics in that song really, really got to me. Like at the beginning of the song, she's like, it took me three days for me to send you this. I was in deep depression. I'm trying to get out of it. Yeah. It's not, <laughs> it's not at all how like I said it, but yeah. anyway. So what I, what I wrote down in here, Dead Horse really resonated with me because she sings about having this overbearing feeling of self-doubt and I feel that. Dude, I've, I know from me personal, personally, I deal with, with self-doubt all the time. Well, not all the time. I do like most of the time. And like definitely like having like something like a burden almost. Like had like the expression like beating a dead horse, like dealing with the same thing over and over and over again. You know, like, exp explaining something over and over again, which it doesn't really need to be explained that much. Yeah, okay. So that was Puddles for Armor by Haley Williams. And the next song, I mean, ne next album is Ungodly Hour by Chloe and Halle. Now this album, uh, if it were not for Beyonce, I don't think I would check their. I would have checked their album out. Def definitely, w the songs that I liked in this one were "Do It," "Forgive Me," "Busy Boy," "Ungodly Hour," and "Lonely." Dude, "Busy Boy," that's like <laughs> the busy. Like it's like so subliminally. Like it has like you know if you if you hear it you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. But yeah, it's like really shows them as mature, young, black women, black women. And also it, this out on Godly Hour, it definitely shows them, shows their growth as musical artists. I ha I didn't, I listened to a little bit of their, their, the kids are all right project. I listened to a little bit of that. And then listening to on Godly Hour, it just totally different feel to it. I really like the video on for Do It as well. Okay, so that was all I had to say about Ungodly Hour. I didn't have any standout lyrics to me. So that was Ungodly Hour by Chloe and Hallie. 
And at number 21 is Before Love Came to Kill Us by Jesse Reyes. So her song, Intruders, is the intro song that I have for some of the YouTube videos that I have posted. Uh, I really, I like the intro of that song. And then also the message of, of that song is really, is very interesting. She's, Jesse is such a unique artist and I've never really got into her or not really got, I haven't really dis I discovered her this year, I guess. But I've always known about her, but never really took interest in what her body of work sounds like. So with this out, like, oh my gosh, the the first track on this album, uh, it's um, what is it? I freaking know it. I know it. Oh, it's called "Do You Love Her," and it's like the it, like the big the first line. I'm not gonna say it, but it's kind of, it's explicit, but it's just like, I was like, whoa, that opening line though. So the, the favorite standout tracks for me on this album were, are Intruders, I Do, Imported featuring Black, Kill Us, Figures, and Coffin featuring Eminem. I also like the acoustic version of that as well. I don't mind Eminem's version either. Uh, this album has themes of immigration, unfaithfulness, love and pain and suffering now like the last song on this album is figures it is the her probably her oldest i came i think it came out like 2016 but it's on the her 2020 album and with that song if you her like i don't think i've ever heard any anyone else that sounds like jesse reyes her voice is so distinctive like if I heard her like featured on a song or something, I'd be like, "That's Jessie. I know her. I know her voice." And that's like a, I think that's a pretty good compliment coming from the viewer's perspective or consumer's perspective if they're able to hear an artist's voice for the first time and then it sticks with them. I think that's really good. And she really this is like this is like one of the this is one of the strongest debut albums of 2020 so far oh Im immigration for sure she touches on it on intruders and imported i'm not like the one of the lyrics in imported say i'm not from here i'm imported my name's not important <sighs> and i really like how she incorporated that aspect into her album because i don't hear a lot of artists talk about immigration especially with the situation that's going on in the United States with like the immigration reform and foreign people or foreigners not having citizenship, being here as illegal aliens. So it, I found that really captivating about her, that she put, that she mentioned immigration in intruders and in imported. And I really admire her, I admire her arti artistry for that. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to any projects that she release in the future. Okay, so yeah, uh, that was Before Love Came to Kill Us by Jesse Reyes. And at number 20 is How I'm Feeling Now by Charlie XCX. Ugh, bruh. Yo, this, guys, How I'm Feeling Now by Charlie XCX. This album was created during Miss Rona during quarantine. And it's surpri it's surprisingly one of her best projects, even though it is created in like a short period of time. Her last full length album, it was released in September. I don't know this How I'm Feeling Now was released in May. Now what I, this album was definitely a grower for me. I didn't immediately grasp onto the songs but it took a few listens for me to listen to really get a, have a liking for them. For example, like the first, the lead single for this album is Forever. And the product, like the intro of that song, like the production is so heavy, like really distorted and everything. I was just like, Ugh, I don't know how I feel about this. But then after a few listens, I began to appreciate it more. The same way with Claws. Claws dude like charlie is like very like it's, 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 like very like pop party themed um 
she makes that kind of music. Oh yeah, some some of the best or some standout tracks for me are Pink Diamond, Forever, Claws, I Finally Understand, and Click 2.0 and Visions. All I'm saying is about the production of the album. It's so immaculate. <laughs> A standout lyric in this album is, I finally understand my therapist said I hate myself really bad. You tell me it's fine, let me cry and hug it out. Which is the line in I finally understand. And that song, that song is about her personal experience, like realizing that her significant other, because she was, uh, in an interview that she said, in an interview she said that her and her significant other were living apart from each other and then during quarantine they began to live together and then begin to rekindle their relationship. And with this song, in that context, she's saying, I finally understand that this person is here for me and they always cared for me, but like distance got the best of us. That's the best way I can explain it. So that was How I'm Feeling Now by Charlie XCX and at number 19 is Bigger Love by John Legend. Bigger Love by John Legend came out on the 19th of June of 2020. So it hasn't, as I'm recording this, it hasn't been out for a month yet. But um, the artwork of the album was really captivated me. And then also Janae Aiko was featured on it. So I had to go check it out, but I, never really listened to John Legend until this album came out. It's classified as R&B soul, but it also has like elements of like, I guess classical or pop. And um, I get reggae, reggae for sure. There's a song on here that's called uh, Never Walk Away featuring Coffee and she is a reggae based artist. And um, that's like that song never walk away is so it's so weird because it reminds me of a different song no 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 oh yeah uh that song reminds me of um if you know the song by uh ricky martin and maluma it's called vente peca vente peca vente peca i'm not i'm pretty sure that's not the perfect way to pronounce that song, but that's what that song reminds me of that song. Here are some here are some songs that really stood out to me in this song, in this album. Slow Cooker, Now. This, that song, I'm gonna just have this whole segment about that song. I was, when I heard that song for the first time, I, oh my gosh. I can't even explain to you the way I was moving when I heard that song. It's just like part of my bluntness, but baby making song. And like his like the way he like sings stuff, it's like slow cook. Oh. Wait, did I kind of hit that? No, I didn't. Boy, you didn't even. <laughs> anyway. Um I really like we gonna slow cook up in here. Uh, I'm sorry to the people, like, I'm not a singer, but you're about to get a whole bunch of covers you didn't ask for in this album, in this review, so. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. Okay, anyway, slow cooker, you move, I move, don't walk away, remember us, and always. Those songs really stood out to me. And also, bigger love and conversations in the dark. The first thing you, you probably think of when you hear John Legend is all of me. That is his, biggest song to date of his career. It is his most well-known song. When you think of John Legend, you hear of that song, All of Me. Now, with Conversations in the Dark, I honestly think that's the song that is up to tier with All of Me. With a song like that, everyone's going to compare future works to their biggest song. Like, for example, like, uh, songs on Chromatica with Lady Gaga's album. Most of them are gonna be, mo her works past Born This Way and The Fame are going to be compared to Bad Romance, which is her biggest song to date. It's her most well-known song. When you think of Gaga, you think of Bad Romance. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, he has a lot of songs that are going to be compared to All of Me. 
and I think conversations in the dark is really aligned with all of me. That's just what I think. That's why I personally think you don't have to agree with me. So that was Bigger Love by John Legend. And the next album at number 18 is What's Your Pleasure by Jesse Ware. If I could describe this album in two sentences, department store music, future nostalgia's older sister. I'm sure a lot of you or probably most people don't know who Jesse Ware is. Jesse Ware on was on the print the pink print with Nicki Minaj, the generous queen Nicki Minaj on her pink print album on the crying game. That's how that's like how I first heard about her. Anyway, uh, this album, this one came out on June 20, this album came out on June 26, 2020. I cannot say enough good things about this album. Like the more I listened to it, I, I initially had this album at number 22, but the more I listened to it, I had to rank it up higher because it's so good. The introduction on this album is Spotlight and it's such a beautiful intro. And the songs are really long, which I really appreciate now because most songs in 2020 and like probably like 2018, 2020, they're all two minutes or less or barely two minutes. Most of these songs on this album are like songs you can groove to. And they're definitely, like I said, department store music. You, I guarantee, I can probably guarantee you that you, if you hear this album, you'll probably hear one of her songs in like TJ Maxx or Walmart now. Girl, I don't know. I forget. Just like any department store that you can think of, like this will probably be playing in the background. Also, it's like the production on this album. It's like very, I said um, Future Nostalgia's older sister. Like Dua Lipa's album would be the younger sister to Jessie's album. I'm like literally not doing this album enough justice by having like a short description about it, but it's, I would recommend this album to anybody who likes pop slash disco kind of music. It's very like nostalgic influence, I suppose. Some songs that stood out to me in What's Your, in What's Your Pleasure by Jesse Ware, Spotlight, Ooh La La, in your eyes. The production on that song, like the production and the vocals are so clean and parallel, it's ridiculous. And also Mirage, Don't Stop. That's probably the favorite song I have on that album. If you're not gonna listen to any other song, I would mostly recommend for you to listen to is Mirage, Don't Stop, and Spotlight. I can't even describe to you how incredible those songs are. It's ridiculous but I have like so many more albums to get to. That was What's Your Pleasure by Jesse Ware. And now number 17 is Black Coffee by DeLacy. This album has elements of pop and R&B. Now, you, pro you probably never heard of DeLacy until just now that I told you. She is mainly known as a songwriter, mainly known for co-writing Without Me by Halsey. And she recently won a like a songwriting songwriters award for that song. So yeah, that's what that is what she is primarily known for. The album as a whole, it is music that you would hear in like a TV show like I'm going to just say it, you. And I hate that show with passion. Like you would hear that song like probably like the she's the green I don't know. It's like very like sultry, like deep, dark sound. And that's kind of like how I've realized with myself, I kind of like those deeper, darker sounds. And some songs that stood out to me in this album are Black Coffee, My Man, Chapel, definitely Chapel. I really like the unique approach she had to that song. It's like, very, it has like very like slight country influences. So I really like that one. Chapel, Emily, the Subway song and actress. If you have a if you have a friend named Emily, deg dedicate that song to her. Tag you tag your Emily friends, guys. And uh, yeah, this is definitely the first introduction I had to her. Like that's the only music that she's ever put out. Would definitely with time. No, that black coffee is gonna is going to age like fine wine in like five to ten years. It's gonna sound so 
beautiful. Definitely, if you're not gonna listen to any other song on that album, I would most definitely recommend for you to listen to if you'd like to listen to anything I have to say. The Subway song, for sure, and the first one. Damn! So, that was Black Coffee by DeLacy. And the next one I have is number 16, Women in Music Part 3 by Haim. Women in Music Part 3 by Haim. This album, I would have to say, probably their best album to date. Which is gonna be a given, hopefully, with most artists. Their quality of their projects get better with time. It wasn't too experimental or anything. The first track, Los Angeles, perfect intro. I can just picture myself like walking down the street in Los Angeles, California and listening to this song. Okay, some songs that stood out to me in this album were Los Angeles, Don't Wanna, 3AM, Now I'm In It, Hallelujah and Summer Girl. Some of the themes that were covered in this album were sexism, friendship, equality, and love. Sexism, specifically in The Steps. Danielle, Esty, Alana, they all talk in that specific song. It, it details sexism. Like one, line, one lyric in the song is, every time I thought I, were ta I was taking The Steps, you were right there to hold me back in, but do you understand? You don't understand. Saying like you wouldn't understand the woman's struggle to elevate themselves in the music industry. Which I really liked how they put that into their album, incorporated that aspect. That was Women in Music Part 3 by Haim. The next one I have on this list is number 15, Kid, Kid Crow by Conan Gray. Kid Crow is probably the str one, I already said this again, but like one of the strongest debuts from an artist that I've heard so far this year. Or like so far, period. There was, there was one note that I wrote in here. It takes a lot for me to cry. Listening to a song from an artist that I've never heard before, never, discuss, never heard their music, never heard anything from them. Conan made me cry. I heard this the story for the first time when the album came out and I was crying, dude. It's like one of the, the story is one of those songs I'll rarely ever listen to, but the storytelling in that song, oh my gosh. Uh, he really adores Taylor Swift and this definitely, I can definitely hear some elements of Taylor in Kid Crow. And he's definitely a lyricist. Like I can tell with like songs like Affluenza, Wish You Were Sober, Checkmate, Heather for sure. If you've heard Heather, then you know. So, oh wait, let me, let me list some of the songs that stood out to me. Let me see, okay. Wish You Were Sober, Checkmate, Heather, Little League, The Story, Affluenza. The album title. So uh, he did an interview with uh, Zach Sang a couple months ago, promoting his album. And he said like uh, the name that he came up for this album was his, his friend group associate each other with different animals and Conan is a crow, according to his friends, which is how the album title came to be. And he also said something in that interview which was really interesting to me. He was talking about how he's never been in a relationship before, but he most of the songs that he wrote for this album were inspired by you know, like one or two people. He was saying that he would have like one conversation with someone and then like juice all the content from that one interaction into like, a several songs, which was really weird. I don't know. No, the story. Another thing about the story. It's like a teen movie in itself. Like you would hear the story. You can, when you're hearing that song, you can just picture a teen laying on their bed, looking up at the ceiling, and then this indie teen song is playing in the background. They're just being all reminiscent, all nostalgic, and all teenager, and all the lessons. And it's just like, wow, life is life, man. You know what we hear, but it's not what we hear. All right, and at number 14, is Notes on a Conditional Form by the 1975. 
With the 1975's album, this Notes on a Conditional Form has to be the personal favorite out of every album that they've released. I've been a follower slash fan of them since their, 2000, since their 2016 album came out. I like it when you say, for you're so beautiful, you're so unaware of it. I didn't, I really need to revisit their old, their other albums, but like this one really resonated with me. I really liked it. Still don't like people. I, that song is way too much for me. Can barely stand that song. I heard it what, the second time. Some standout tracks I liked from the album were, If You're Too Shy, Let Me Know, The Birthday Party, Guys. Uh, I've been, here, I've been listening to that song just by itself so many times. That's the favorite song that I have. Also, yeah, I know, nothing revealed, everything denied. Those are the favorite songs I had on that album. And there are 22 songs on the album too. I feel like this album was really different from the past two projects. Uh, I watched some videos of Maddie explaining how different this album is from the other ones. And I, I think I watched, um, I think it was like Pitchfork's video of him talking about it. And he said to describe this album in three words is end of era, which is, which means this will be the not last 1975 album for a while. Oh, another thing that was very interesting that he mentioned, all, all the intros for all their albums are the 1975. That is their first track on every single album. And with this intro of this album is quite different because uh, Greta Thunberg or Greta Thunberg, I believe, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce her last name. I'm sorry, it's wrong. Anyway, she is the opening track. She's, she is the opening person in the intro of this album. Incredible. In his mind, the, all, everyone who made the album, their mind. That was all, that was, that was all I had for that album. The net, that was Notes on a Conditional Form by the 1975. And at number 13, it was good until it wasn't by Kehlani. Guys, I, I got so mad at her last year when she released her mixtape. Not an album, mixtape, while we wait. It's still, it's still a great project. But this one, I really liked it. I think it's one, she said it's like one of her favorite projects that she's ever made and I can definitely see why. Some of, some of the standout tracks that I really liked on this album are Toxic. The Toxic was a grower for me. I didn't immediately like it when I first heard it, but the more times I listened to it, I really like it. Everybody, everybody business. Everybody's business, water, open, in parentheses, passionate. I think it's track 10. I think it is. I'm not saying it though, but it's good. Also, change your life. Those are the songs that really stood out to me. It's really interesting. I was watching a reaction video of someone reacting to this. Uh, I think it was Ashley. It's something that was really interesting. So, the album cover is her standing on a pot, looking over a wall, but we just see the backside of her. But on the back cover of the album, you see her face, and it's kind of like her face is full of distress, and like in the background is a bunch of chaos. I will include I will include a picture to, so you will see what I'm talking about. But I did not pick that up when I first saw the album cover, and I wasn't really a big fan. I would didn't really quite understand the album cover when I first saw it, but I kind of liked it a lot more. Definitely everybody business. The song on that one, the the song, the lyrics on that song talk about. Sure, she sings about how it's kind of, I guess like kind of like complicated to deal with having a life in the public eye and then having all these people judge you, criticize you, very, being very intruding on your privacy. I also really like her vocals on that song too. And does definitely open, passionate, that song, the open part of it and then the transition to passionate. Dude, I did not appreciate that enough until I listened to it more and more and more. The trans, oh my gosh, it's like two songs in one. It's amazing. Also, I need to I need to learn the piano for water. The beginning of that part, I need to learn how to do that. Yeah, that's that's really all I had to say on that album. It's very different because most all of most of it was created during quarantine. 
So that was, it was good until it wasn't by Kehlani. And at number 12, I have High Road by Kesha. I personally think this album is a perfect blend slash mix between Rainbow and Cannibal or her earlier projects. It definitely has some of the, the introspective tracks like Resentment, Father Daughter Dance, Chasing Thunder. It has definitely some of like the upbeat ones like Raising Hell, Kinky, uh, My Own Dance. Oh yeah, let me list some of the songs that really stood out to me in this one. Resentment, Kinky, <laughs> BFF, Father Daughter Dance, High Road, and Raising Hell. Guys, <sighs> Father Daughter Dance. I really think it is, that song is one of her best songs that I think that she's ever written. Also Resentment, I really didn't appreciate that song the first couple times I heard it, but the more times I listened to it, I remember hearing that song on a car trip when I was going to Tulsa, just listening to that song, I started crying. Oh my gosh, it's such, such a beautiful song. Also, Father Daughter Dance. Like her vocals on it is just like gripping, like it grips your heart. She was talking about how she never grew up with a father. She'll never get that Father Daughter Dance. She doesn't know why she's angry at something that she's never had. I really recommend that song. It's, I can't say enough good things about that song. Definitely the lyrics on the Father Daughter Dance top tier for sure. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, this album would have probably taken Rare's place, which I'll mention Selena's album later, if it weren't for the Potato Song, Cause I Want To, or Tonight. Like, what were, what are those songs? I don't understand. Sis, I <sighs> That's just like pure clownery. That's what those songs are. Anyway, moving on from High Road by Kesha, and number 11 is Punisher by Phoebe Bridgers. This album is classified as alternative. I remember I was listening to um, Billy Billy's radio show and she was mentioning, like saying like high praises about Phoebe and her music. And I was like, okay, should I go look? give her a listen. I saw that she was releasing an album on the 19th of June, so I was gonna give her a listen. The best way I can describe this album is The Punisher is like how Immunity by Claro was for me. Slowed down type of songs with really deep lyrical content. And the instrumentation on these songs, oh my gosh. Savior is Complex, the violin on that song. So, so beautiful. Oh my gosh incredibly beautiful also halloween wait let me just list some of those tracks uh garden song kyoto punisher halloween chinese satellite savior's complex i would also say moon song as well and the album art it really got me intrigued and another thing savior's complex has to be like one of the songs that really really captivated me the first time i heard it and a lyric from that song that stood out to me was I've been running around in circles pretending to be myself. Why would somebody do this on purpose? Pretending to be themselves on purpose. Which is like, Savior's Complex. You're pretending to be a savior when you're really not. This this song is, this album is just gonna be like, it's going to age wonderfully. Also, her music videos are so weird. Um, Garden Song, Girl. Now we're in the top 10 tier now. So 11. That was Punisher by Phoebe Bridgers. And now number 10 on the best albums of 2020 so far is Sawayama by Rina Sawayama. Now, I cannot say enough good things about her as a person. She, I've learned so much about her. She is, She's from Japan, but she grew up in Britain. So she has like a Britain, she has a British accent. Uh, and her sound is so unique. I have never heard anything like any song on her album. Bro, this, the, the first song, Dynasty, everybody needs to listen to that song right now. Dynasty. It, Dynasty is, one of, if not the best intro I've ever heard on an album. Oh my gosh, dude. Her vocals are what intrigued me the most. I've never heard of, I've never, I've never heard her sing before. I've never heard of her. I didn't know what she looked like. 
I just knew that this was this is an album like a lot of people were really had a lot of good things to say about it. It's an incredible album. I can't not suggest it enough for people to listen to. Okay, I got that out of the way. Um, some songs that stood out to me were Dynasty, XS, Track 3. Yeah. Comme des Gossons, Bad Friend, Chosen Family, and Tokyo Love Hotel. This album contains themes of friendship, love, uh, finding or self-growth, uh, self-love for sure. And a, a, a lyric that really stood out to me was, is from Chosen Family. We don't need to be related to relate. We don't need to share genes or a surname. You are my chosen family. Which is, she, Rena identifies as pansexual, which if I'm not mistaken, is means that your pansexuality means you're attracted to anybody regardless of gender. So they don't, I don't entirely, I'm not entirely sure what pansexuality means, but I heard her talk about it, but not totally in depth. Anyway, so Chosen Family is about the LGBTQ plus community or LGBTQIA, emphasis on A, plus community. I think there's like a song for everybody, like Comde Garçon, XS, more like pop, uh, track three, more rock like, like ish, you know, uh, Tokyo Love Hotel, um, Who's Gonna Love Me, Love Me For Me. Those songs are like more like alternative kind of so sounding songs. But yeah, it's really a decent project. Definitely, I would say like that would be a, another timeless project as well. Cannot say enough good things about it. Listen to Sawayama. Okay, so that was Sawayama by Rina Sawayama. Now number nine is Rare by Selena Gomez. Rare was the first major release of 2020. It was, re it was released on January 10th, 2020. And when I first heard it, I was not sure if it was going to stand the test of time. Is it going to age really quickly or is it going to stay or is it still going to sound really good? And it has really grown on me, surprisingly. Hi, uh, I ran out of storage on the iPhone and I can't really do much about that. So I'm re currently recording on the iPad. So anyway, let's get back on track. I'm literally almost done. Rare by Selena Gomez. The standout tracks, Vulnerable, Lose You to Love Me, of course. Crowded Room, Let Me Get Me, Cut You Off. Cut You Off instantly, instantly got me hooked also uh when she released those two songs in october lose you to love me and look at her now dude lose you to love me i cried for the first time when i heard that song it blew it blew me away it's one of her best songs and it also went number one on the hot 100 too which is a big deal it's her first number one single too that was rare by selena gomez and the next, at number eight, is The Slow Rush by Tame Impala. This one is classified as alternative. Okay, this, this is what I wrote down. What really captivated me about this album was the introspective production and minimal vocals. Uh, he does sing in most of them. This is the first album of his that I've really listened to in full. I've never heard a Tame Impala project before this one. What I really like about this album is the, um, it's, again, it's an easy listen. It's something that I could listen to while I'm doing something else. It's, the production is very soothing. It's very calming and I really like it. Standout tracks that I had were, or what I really liked were Posthumous Forgiveness, It Might Be Time, Borderline, Instant Destiny, 
Oh, is it true? I like that one too. Whew. Okay, that was The Slow Rush by Tame Impala. At number seven is After Hours by The Weeknd. Uh, this, I would say this album incorporates genres, uh, R&B and soul, pop, a little bit of rap, especially in Heartless. Yeah. Oh, and here, here's something that I, here's something that I wrote down. I really think After Hours has really cemented Abel's place as a true artist. Now, as a true artist, what do I mean by that? I mean, a true artist is someone who is, who involves themselves in every aspect of their album. Like they write the lyrics, they compose it, they produce it, they have some part of engineering the song slash the album as a whole. And he produced and composed and wrote the lyrics to every single song, except he didn't, he didn't produce Repeat After Me, the interlude of the, in the album. Some standout tracks that I really liked from this album were, or are, Hardest to Love, Scared to Live. Dude, that song, Scared to Live, that's one of the favorite songs I have on that album. Uh, Snow Child, Faith, Blinding Lights, In Your Eyes, and also the remix with Doji. Guys, I kind of like the remix though. I kind of like it though, even though a lot of people were saying it's trash. Uh, and also, Save Your Tears and After Hours. Okay, so that was After Hours by The Weeknd. And at number six is Manic by Halsey. This album is classified as alternative, but also has influences of rock, pop, um, let me think, and alternative as well. All right, so, well, captivated about this album. What I've noticed so far with all the albums that I've listed so far, I oh guess Sawayama and then Halsey's album and then some of the albums that I'll, that I'll later say, they're very personally based. Like Rena's album is her last name. It's about her, it tells her story as a person. And Halsey's album, her real name is Ashley Halsey is just <laughs> it is rearranged, basically. And the first track is Ashley. It's her real name. And I think it is a, it's like a great intro to the album as a whole. Halsey is a true artist because like in terms of like drawing and painting, amazing with that. And then also the lyrics. She is an incredible lyricist. I admire her talent so much especially the lyrics in um finally a beautiful stranger all the all the lyrics in that song are beautiful <laughs> hence the title and okay some of the standout tracks that i really like from this album are tracks one through one through four 3 a.m without me finally beautiful stranger more still learning okay yeah so that was Manic by Halsey. And at number five is Kiki by Kiana Lede. The vocals, I can't even explain to you how insane her vocal range is. Oh my gosh. This album has themes of self-love, relationships, and love as itself. Some songs that stood out to me are Movin', Forfeit, second chances, and then transitioning into crazy, honest, feel away, and attention. Oh yeah, if there's a song from this album, out of all the songs on this album to recommend to you, the viewer, it would be attention. Listen to that song. It is quite underrated and it's a very beautiful song. The piano, her vocals are, go together so well. Like the, the ending part, Perfection. There's nothing wrong with that song. If there's, if you think there's something wrong with that song, there's something wrong with you. I'm just kidding. Ugh. Am I kidding though? I don't know. Mm. <sighs> okay. I talked way too much about this. All right, next. That was Kiki by Kiana Lede. And at number four is Future Nostalgia by 
Zula Peeps or <clears throat> Dua Lipa. And I have it with me. Oh, well, it looks weird on the camera. <gasps> oh my gosh. No, this is what the inside of the album looks like. And this is the back of the album cover. I would rather it look kind of like um, like this. Dude, what happened? <gasps> My chaps are fell down. Okay, so oh yeah, let me show what the, let me let me let me show what the CD looks like. If I can't get out of here, that's what future nostalgia looks like. A moon. Hold on, I'm gonna try to find this chapstick before it goes down. Okay, I got it. I got it. Ugh. Dude, Future Nostalgia. Another album that I cannot say enough good things about. Now listen, this album has genres of pop, disco, and dance. Hence the title Future Nostalgia with elements from the past, 80s, 90s, and then elements from the modern age in 2020. This album came out on March 27th, 2020, but it, the album is so good, like I would have waited an extra week for it. And some standout tracks on the album, every single song. Every single song. There is no dull song on the album at all. At least personally, that's what I think. And with Future Nostalgia as a title, Dua said that it's her, it's an album that has like a mix of like disc disco 80s music and modern pop music. And another thing, like her, like now to like represent the album, her, it's, it's her with the blonde hair in the front and then like the black hair in the back, which this is the future and then nostalgia is the back. Her mind, I know, I know, her mind is just so big. Ugh. Guys, I know, we're almost done. I'm almost done. We have three more albums left. Future Nostalgia, that was Future Nostalgia by Dua Lipa at number four. And at number three is Chromatica by Gugu. Goodly Gugu. You, man, you already knew this was coming. If you saw the Chromatica video, then you know I was gonna include this in here. You're like, when was Joshua gonna put Chromatica in here? Well, here it is, bruh. You see it now. Guys, when I saw that Chromatica by Gaga, one of the favorite artists ever of all time, was releasing her album the same day I turned 20, like that, like, it's like a message from God telling me that this is your album. Yeah. Dude, I don't know, bro. Oh yeah, Chromatica, I even have it with me. Look, it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh my god. Oh wait, look, here's what the CD looks like. That's what it looks like inside. Um, ooh. Wait, let me see if I can go through the booklet. The booklet is really, the booklet is really pretty inside. This is Chromatica. Some visuals. I'm gonna go through this real quick so I don't, I'm not boring you. Hopefully not. I don't know what the heck that is. Freaking squirrel. What the squirrel? No. Um, there's, I don't know what that is. Oh, that, that picture. Uh, song credits. There's this picture. And the last picture, this chromatica. Okay, now, what makes this such an amazing album? Uh, the transition between Chromatica 2 and 911. But, like, huh? Well, why? Why? She did not, not have she did not have to do that. To me, to us, no. Okay, some songs that stood out to me. Stupid Love, Rain On Me, Free Woman, Sour Candy, Replay, Babylon. The wordplay in Babylon, bada. That's gossip. Babble on, battle for your life, babble on. My guy, oh my gosh. Like, it's so clever. And then like, like in the beginning, I don't know what that is, but it's like, like that song. 
Like War Cry, I don't know. War Cry, I don't know. We almost done, guys. Thank you if you stayed this long to see how long I've gotten to this. But yeah, so number three was Chromatica by Gaga. And number two on the best albums of 2020 is It Was Divine by Elena Baraz. This album is classified as R&B soul music. Listen, if you follow me on social media, you know that I've been posting about this album for so long when it came out. I, ugh, I don't know, would I recommend this? Yeah, I do. I would recommend this to every single person. I feel like there's a song for everybody that would like something on this album i would say for like more like pop ish they would like people would like if you like more pop sounding songs you would probably like off the grid featuring khalid if you like more kind of like soulful songs i would suggest listening to frank or to me that oh my gosh to me is such a beautiful song oh here here's something that i wrote down i can't say this enough I have so many good things to say about it. Another thing, I have so many good things to say about it. It Was Divine is one of the strongest creative articulate albums I've ever heard. And I mean that. I mean it. But from the production, the vocal layering. Here are some songs that stood out to me. Morocco, Frank, Endlessly. Amazing song. Off the Grid, More Than Enough. I've listened to that song so many times. One of the best songs. Who Got Me, Say You Know Me, Say You Know, Take It Home, Until I Met You, The Beginning. I have said enough about this album. Now, here is the number one album of 2020 so far, at least in my opinion. I forgot to show Alina's album. I have her album. Here it is, this beautiful thing, oh my gosh. It's so, like, the album art. It's beautiful. Uh, okay, let me show, let me see if I can quickly show you before I get into the album number one. Okay, so here is what the booklet looks like. Basically, okay, it's very min minimalistic, I'm sorry. What's here? Okay, well, nothing much. Oof, it's, I really like the style of it, yeah. Okay, now, here we go. Number one album of 2020 is Chalumbo by Janae Aiko. Dude, I, I'm gonna shoot a bullet, what? I'm gonna run out in the street. If I say anything more about how beautiful or how many good things I can say about it. Because there really aren't enough. There are 20 songs on this album. It's classified as R&B and soul. But also has like elements of rap, pop, or like blues, like old, old kind of genres of music. Yeah. This is the first project of Janae's I have ever heard. Probably the first several couple of songs I've ever heard from Janae Aiko as an artist. I think probably the first song I've ever heard by Janae was Triggered. No. I think it was the worst, I think. That was the first song I've ever heard by Janae. So, top songs for me. I guess, r honestly, really, the entire album. <laughs> Not really. So, what I have written down here, Summer 2020, The Interlude, 10,000 Hours, Dude, oh my gosh. I can just like imagine myself crying in the future just listening to this song just like, oh my gosh. Uh, happiness over and hope that happiness over everything or ho for short. <laughs> Boy, you stop. Uh triggered freestyle and none of your concern. I know every single lyric to that song. Except I skip Sean's part. I do. I don't I don't listen to his part. I just skip it. Yeah, that's really all I had to say about that. Those best 25 albums of 2020. Here's a bonus. I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can because it's so late. Dishonorable Benchins, Treat Myself by Megan Trainer. 
even Nicki Minaj, the generous queen Nicki Minaj, could not save that album. I said what I said. I said what I said. <laughs> I've been waiting to say that for so long. Uh, dude, I was so disappointed in hearing that album. Oh my gosh. I'm like, she hasn't released an album since 2016, and like, we get that? Hold on, let me, let me see what, let me see what I wrote down so I don't mess it up. Most of the tracks have little to no replay value, not a timeless album, and not a mature sound from Megan. It's very childish and rudimentary. There are several good songs like Nice to Meet Ya, a Genetics, G E N T I C S. Would you get that bob? Is it from God? Did you work real hard? G E I need to ask him. That song is really good. I really like that song. But <laughs> I'm working on it. That song's okay. Anyway, those songs really are the standard tracks for me. So awesome. Honorable mentions that I had to include in here. Amusing Her Feelings by Division. The album by Tayana Taylor. Sugar, Sugar by the Stallion herself. And Sis by Kirby. And hmm, Lyricist by Hayes. I win. I win because Hello. I am a lyricist and I have words in my brain. And also, oh, projects that are confirmed to be released and are planning to be released. Let me see. Hold on. Let me look at the list I made just to make sure. I know that Katy Perry's album is finally being released on... A month from today, yeah. Smile is being re released a month from today. I'm extremely looking forward to that album. The Follow to Witness. Oh yeah, Ellie Golding's album, Brightest Blue, is coming on Friday, so I'm excited for that one. Dude, okay. I'm just gonna go through this as quickly as I can. Because it's already been so long. But here we go. Projects I'm looking forward to being released in 2020, hopefully, and that Miss Rona is not going to delay anyone's album, but we're going to see. Beyonce, Rihanna, of course, Demetria, Rosalia, Florence and the Sheen, SZA, Georgia Smith, Kali Uchis, Miley Cyrus, Madison Beer, Madison, when's the next single coming? We need it. Bruno Mars, uh, Adele, we're probably not going to get it this year. Ella May, Nicki Minaj, the generous queen Nicki Minaj. Uh, Mick, oh, okay. Oh, that's kind of con- mm. Uh, Victoria Monet. Jaguar is coming in August. It's only nine songs, not a project, not an album. Cardi B. Oh, Normarni. Lauren Haregi. Girl, we- Oh my gosh, Normarni. Lauren Haregi. Normarni, where is the music? I will say this one time, I'll say it again. Normani's team, the one for her team, she would be doing so well right now. Uh, yes, Lauren Haregi, girl. If Lauren Haregi releases an R&B album, I will die. I will die, bro. I, you will not see me living. Dude, if she releases an album, I will react to it. Oh my gosh, I can't. And also Casey Musgraves, follow, follow up to Golden Hour. That was it. Oh my gosh, if you have got to this far, thank you. Dude, I, this probably be the longest video I've ever made. Yeah, so I, if you got to this far, thank you. Music like really is such a powerful thing to me and I have learned to appreciate it so much. So I'm looking forward to see if anyone else has like same opinions on the albums I, or music musical projects that I have listed and that's everything I've listed definitely has showed you a lot about me and stuff I like as a person. I am looking forward to the rest of 2020. There are six months left of 2020. Six months until 2021 which is dude crazy and Rihanna still hasn't released any music. I you know what here's the problem she shouldn't have said anything and she would have said 2019 something's coming then then she's just leading us on she is being a troll she is being annoying she's cheating us we are mad at you but we also need an album too follow up to anti we need it when is r9 coming uh i won't shut up about it i'm sorry also not uh yeah so that that concludes the album 2020 ranking and yeah, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.